Statistics and Excel, Binomial Experiment Proportion of Customer Complaints Remedied Example Problem. Get ready and some coffee because it's time to get realistic with statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below, example, practice, blank, example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting, the blank tab, the one we will be working on, as you can see, is blank. We'll construct this from a blank worksheet, practicing our Excel tools as we build it. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building, looking at an example similar to recent examples we've been working on, once again with a binomial type of situation. However, this time, instead of having a result approximating 50-50, it's gonna approximate more of a 75-25 type of situation, which will be a little bit more complex for us to set up. But the general idea is the same here. We have a, a population. We wanna find information about that population, and we can't test every item within the population. Therefore, we would like to take a sample from the population test the sample, hoping we can apply the results we found from the sample to the larger population. Now, if we were testing something like weights or heights or something like that, for example, heights, the results of the sample and the population would be something like 5, 2, 6, 3, 6, 1, and so on and so forth, a varied amount of results. But here, any one result can only have two possibilities, hence the by part of the binomial situation, which could happen in surveys where you ask, did you like the product or you did not like the product? Yes or no. In election scenarios, where are you voting for A or B or possibly are you voting for this person or not voting for this person, right? So we're looking at scenarios where you have a yes or no or just two possible situations uh, that can be occurring. In our example, we have a population of customer complaints. So we're imagining we're a business possibly like in the movie industry. We're in Hollywood and we have the customer complaints. And the question is, did we resolve the customer complaints within a week's time frame or not? The answer being either yes or no, hence binomial situation. We're gonna imagine 40,000 as the population big N, the sample size 250, which will be a little N, and then we're gonna be approximating a standard deviation of two standard deviations, which is around 95% of the data you will basically uh, recall. Now remember the general idea is gonna be similar here in that with a binomial experiment, once we get all of the results, if it was the results of the population, we still don't have something that's bell-shaped, right? We only, if we were to put a histogram making a zero for the no's and a one for the yeses, for example, then it's, it's only gonna have two bars on it. And we can imagine the middle of that basically being the mean or the average we would like to be approximating a bell-shaped curve, however, because we know a lot about it, we can define it with just two terms, one being the center point, the mean or the average, the second being the spread, the standard deviation. So we have a similar concept that we can basically, that we've seen in prior presentations saying, hey, look, if I took every combination of samples in sample size, this time of 250 out of a population of 40,000, and then I took the average of all of those, the mean of all of them, all of those averages 
would then tend towards a bell-shaped type of curve. So we have a similar uh, situation that way. So then the question would be, what do I need to make the bell-shaped curve? I need to have the standard deviation and I need to have uh, the middle point, the mean. So the middle point now is a little bit more confusing, but it's still pretty easy to calculate because there's only two possible results. So we're looking at basically the ratio between the two results. If it was yes or no, we, you know, what, what's the count of yes or no? And we take the percent of yeses versus nos uh, for example. Now we could do that for the entire population if we knew it, we can do it for one sample and we could do it if we were to imagine all possible samples of 250 and, and we took the mean of all the means. All of those should tend towards the population mean. Uh, uh, for the standard deviation, however, if I took the standard deviation of say the population, then it's, it might give us a measure of the spread, but it's only got these two bars in it, right? So it's not gonna do, and then we could take the standard deviation of one sample, but that's not really what we're looking for. We're looking at the imaginary standard deviation of all possible samples of 250, which we're not actually gonna do, of course, but that's the concept behind the formulas that we are creating. This being the formula when we're looking at a binomial situation, the P, standing for like the proportion, which is kind of like the mean or the average. This is what we were doing when we had non-binomial for like heights and weights and stuff. This one was the standard deviation of the population. If we knew that, if we don't, we might take the standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of n, and then we have the correction factor, which is often dropped off. Here we have the correction factor, which is often dropped off if the population is large enough, basically, times, and then the formula is P times one minus P, which is in essence, the proportion of what we're looking for versus the proportion of what of the opposite of that, the other, right? Because it's the binomial divided by N, which is gonna be uh, the sample. So that's the idea, a little bit more confusing for us to basically do the, do the make the sample because we're gonna make it not 50-50, then we'll do our calculations. And once we find that, we'll approximate our bell-shaped curve from that, all right? So that's the idea. Let's go to the practice tab. You got some pre-formatted cells that you can work through if you want to uh, do less Excel formatting, but we're of course gonna go over here and do all of the Excel formatting. So let's put up top, I'm just gonna put binomial experiment again. Binomial ex experiment all right and then i'm going to for let's format the whole thing first selecting the triangle right click on it we're going to format the cells i like to start off with currency negative numbers bracketed and red no dollar sign let's get rid of those decimals to start off with simply adding them as we need as we go let's go to the home tab i'm going to make it bold in the font group you don't have to do that but i think that's looks better uh, on the screencast. You gotta be bold when you're doing the screencast. Home tab, font group, and then we're gonna make this black and white. Black and, wait, that's white. This needs to be black and then white. So there's our header formatting. I'm just gonna copy over the starting bit, which I know is kind of cheating, because I said I was just gonna do it from a blank worksheet. Now I'm copying, but you can type that in there if you want. What I did is I just inserted a text box so you can insert a text box and type this in there so that it's not actually in a particular cell and then i'll put this bit in a particular cell so we're going to say this is going to be so this just says population uh population is going to be p proportion of customer complaints settled in one week that's what we're looking for now we're we're obviously a hollywood company so how do we settle those customer complaints do you fix their problem no we we disparage them on social media until they shut their mouth and issue an apology and then we still hit them until that's what customer complaint department that's what you do what are we living in the 50s we're going to solve their problem we're going to like listen to them no that's not how we we call it customer disparagement department that's how we deal with things in hollywood but anyways <laughs> we'll get into that later let's just so how many people did we successfully disparage in a week after the complaints came in. We've got in, we've got the sample size 
is going to be 250. We'll measure this out to see how effective our department is at bashing those sun's things. And then we're going to say this is going to be plus or minus standard deviation of two. Okay. And then I'm going to make this bit orange because it's going to be like our starting data. So I'll select this. Let's go to the home tab font group. I'm going to make this uh, orange and maybe I can make this like a little bit larger here and then smaller like this way. And then maybe I can move this up. I'm going to delete this cell. Duh, duh, duh. Move that up a bit. Let's put some borders around it. Home tab font group. Let's make it bordered. All right. I'm also going to copy my formulas over here, which again, I know is kind of cheating, but I'm going to take these. You don't really need these. These are just for us to reference. If you want to actually type those in, uh, you could go to the insert tab up top equations and then ink in the equation. And then you can basically copy these formulas. If you so choose, you can like write it in here and then it draws it up top. And then when, when you mess something up, you can like circle it and say fix it and so on and so it's pretty cool it takes it's a little tedious but not too bad if you want to build it i'm going to make this uh, black and white here all right there's our starting info let's make a skinny c skinny c and p is going to stand for p equals we resolved the complaint we disparaged that guy so bad he will not show his Face on social media ever again that's and then but in the, and then one minus p is the ones that are not resolved not resolved that that one we couldn't find we don't we don't even know who he is because he does a he has a fake identity one of those and we couldn't so we couldn't properly disparage those people yet but they're on the list you're on our list as the hollywood customer complaint disparager department we will take you down. Okay, so let's make this. We got to do better. We need to do better, Hollywood. Look at all these people that we haven't, we haven't, the customer complaint department hasn't remedied, crying out loud. So this is going to be, let, now we're going to do this with a random generation for, this is the format team. So how am I, how am I going to do this, in other words, when I randomly generate these numbers? Uh, well, I'm going to approximate instead of a 50-50 result that they've resolved 75%, right? So I'm going to say for P, I'm going to use a random number generation that me, that's going to equal the result. Or let's do it this way. Let's make it little P. I think I should say little P instead of a big P. I'm not sure it really matters. Probably doesn't. But let's be consistent with a little P. And I'll say little P equals resolved. But I'm actually going to say when I do the number generation, it's going to be one, zero, one, or two. All of those represent that it was resolved. And then one minus P, not resolved. Those ones, those, you're on the list. Don't you, don't think you're getting away from us. We heard you give us a two star on our movie and you are, you will regret it. Thought group, we're going to go, that's going to make this black and white. And then we're going to say, let's make this one home tab font group. And we're going to say this is blue and bordered. Okay. So, 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 so now when I do my random number generation, let's simulate the sample now. So I'm going to say, let's select these and go to the insert format painter, format paint the column F. I'm going to call this the count. We're going to do 250, the data which is going to be uh, randomly numbers generated between zero and three. And then we're going to count them and say, give me the ones that were either zero, uh, one or two. So let me show you how this might work. We're going to then select these, make that a header home tab font group. We'll make this black, white and centered. We're going to count from one, two. I'm going to select those two, copy it down to 250, simulating 250 of the population of complaints that we're dealing with to see. I mean, we're paying these customer disparaging departments to resolve these complaints adequately. Let's see how good of a job 
they're doing. We expect this to be done. We want sub the submission of these customers uh, done within a week for crying out loud. All right, so this is gonna be equal to the random, random between, and we're gonna say the bottom number, let's go from zero comma top number, not gonna be one this time, but to three. So zero to three, we're gonna imagine zero, so it's gonna be like, out, it's kind of out of four numbers, but we're including a zero here. So zero, one, two, three, four, three of them, that means three fourths on average are going to be are going to be resolved one fourth not resolved let's put our cursor on that copy it down double click copy it down i'm going to say Control shift down just to double check it went all the way down to the bottom it looks good so now the, the problem is i've got zeros uh ones twos and threes and what i would like now is to have the resolved ones represent a number one and the unresolved ones to be a zero now the ones that are not resolved uh, are going to be are going to be threes the way we counted it right so a three represented here means it hasn't been resolved so what i'd like to do is say okay excel find go to each one of these cells and if it's either a zero a one or a two i want you to respond by giving me a one so give me a one for that one give me a one for that one give me a one for that one for this one however if it's a three I want you to give me in this column a zero. And that way we will convert the data here to ones and zeros. Zero, one represents resolved, zero represents not resolved. Okay, how can we do that? Let's make these a little thinner to start off with. I'm gonna select all of them, double click to make them as thin as possible. And then I'll make these a little wider just cause I like to have a little, little squishy room, little wiggle room. Okay, in this column, I wanna convert this to be able to say, if it was resolved, I want a one. And if it was not resolved, I want a zero. So what I'd like to do is ask Excel and say, hey, look, look at that number. And if it's either a zero, a one, or a two, return to me a one. And if it happens to be a three, then return to me a zero. Now we can do this with the count function because I could say, hey, look, count this one cell, count it if it happens to be a zero, one, or a two. Now there's a couple, there's a few ways we can do it. One way we could do it is like this, equals count if, and then I'm gonna say Excel, look at that cell and then comma and count it, give me a count, call it a number one, if it happens to be a zero. So in this case, it's gonna count that zero. And then I'm also gonna say plus also count if it happens to be, uh, if, that, if that number happens to be a comma, uh, a, a one and so and then plus count if tab this number happens to be comma a two so I'm gonna look at this one number and you're gonna count it if it's a zero and you're gonna count it if it's a one or a two but obviously it can only be one number so it will count it then whether or not is is a zero a one or a two if it's not any of those three, which means the only other number it could be according to our, our formatting was a three, then it's not gonna count it and it'll leave a zero. So if I say enter, uh, so now it has a two, so it counted it and gave us a number one. If I go in here, I wanna copy it down. So all of these formatted cells that are outside of our data set, I need to make absolute. So everything in column E, which is this one, F4 absolute number, this one f4 absolute number this one f4 absolute number enter put my cursor back on it now it's a three so it made it into a zero double clicking on it and there we have it so now a two gave me a two is converted to a one a three converts to a zero two to a one a zero to a one a one to a one a zero to a one a one to a one so i have a one on everything except where there's a three here which means that I should have a result of ones uh, having a proportion of around 75%, you would think, versus 25, because we randomly generated numbers between zero and four evenly, right? So let's select all of these, control shift down. Let's make that 
uh, bordered and then blue. If you don't have that blue, by the way, it's in the more colors, standard color wheel. There's the blue. You don't have to use that blue, but I like it. It's calming. It's soothing. When you're working in the, in the customer disparagement department, you can get a little agitated when you don't properly disparage a particular customer and they, you can't find them or something, you know? So in any case, home tab font group, we're going to say, we're going to go format painter. And then we're going to say that now let's actually calculate these. So we've got the percent resolved versus the one minus P, the ones that were not resolved. So now I'm just going to be counting the number ones and the number zeros in this column using that count if function equals count if count if tab selecting the range here control shift down control backspace comma what's the criteria give me all the ones count them if you result if you see a one enter 192 now the second bit i know there's going to be equal to 250 minus 192 but that's like a plug and i don't want to do it that way i want to double check my numbers here so i'm going to say count if tab selecting the range control shift down control backspace comma if you see a zero count all of the zeros and enter and then i'm going to get my total which will help me to double check which will be alt equal or sum it up little darling and then we will do our ratio analysis this is going to be the 183 that were resolved and then uh f4 on the keyboard and then i'm going to percentify to recognize and add some decimalize in it and then copy it down boom and so this is the 61 over the 250 if i say alt equals that should add up to 100%, percentify to recognize, decimalizing it. And so there we have it. Let's go ahead and make this border blue, home tab, font group, border blue. So there's going to be uh, our ratios. And you can see it's closer to like 75, 25, which is what we kind of expected. It's going to keep on shuffling around because we let those cells bounce around and that's okay. All right. So now we're going to take those numbers and move on. So now let's make a, let's take that skinny J over here, home tab, font group. I knew a skinny J. He's not as skinny anymore, but he was skinny in high school. So we're going to say this is going to be equal to N, the population. So the population tab, let's, let's make this a little larger. This is going to be equal. Let's just count them to double check the population count. I'll just count the data over here. Let's count these. Control shift down, control backspace, enter. Population 250. That's the same. Uh, actually, the, the population, I'm sorry, is the data. We said the population was 40,000. That's the big N, not the little N. Population is totally, I can't, that's way wrong. Population. Okay. And then the N, little N, is the sample which was the 250 equals the uh, this one I can do with the count. You're confusing people. Control shift down, control backspace. Don't confuse people. You don't have a customer disparaging department to deal with the complaints properly. P the customers will. <laughs> I, I try to I try to resolve the complaints the old fashioned way. Like it looks crazy. What the customer is always right. What are you in the 50s? Kind of. <laughs> What kind of business you run in here? That's not how you deal with complaining customers. Take them out on the media socials. That's how you do it. This is gonna be, actually, hold on a sec. This is gonna be a test, which is going to be uh, N times P, and then uh, test number two, I'm gonna say is gonna be N times uh, one minus P. Okay. So this is going to be a test to see whether or not, uh, this is going to tend towards a bell shaped curve. So in other words, uh, N times P has got to be greater than five in order for it to tend towards the bell shaped curve. When we're imagining all imaginable samples of 250 out of the population of 40,000. So let's just run the test. We're going to say the N is little N 
times the, the percent of P, the resolved ones, 70.5, that's greater than the 250, so we, that's greater than five, so we should be good. And then the difference, one minus P, uh, we'll take the N times one minus P, which is of course this bit, the ones that weren't resolved, that also is greater than five. I'll do a little logic test. This is gonna be this cell has to be uh, greater than, is that greater than five? And it says true for yes, okay? Is this cell equal to this cell greater than five? It says yes. Let's do an even fancier one and go on here and say home tab conditional formatting and say, is that equal to true? We'll say true, T-R-U-E. And then we're gonna say, uh, if it is, make it green. Boom, even fancier. The pantsiers have gotten fancier. There's, there's pleats on the pants. We've inserted pleats on the pants. We've got some fancy pants. Expected P bar so the p bar we're going to imagine is basically kind of like the the mean the average but we're looking at the ratio so that middle point is going to be the percent of that we're looking for which is the 70.8 right so i'm going to say this is whoop hold on du, 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 this is going to be equal to the the 78 uh, percent and so then i can do another test which would be let's percentify to recognize here percentify and decimalize. All right. And then we're going to say that this is going to be another test, which is N over N test needs to be less than 0.05 or let's say 5%. What is this testing for? Whether or not we need to use this correction factor. Typically, we won't need to use it because usually the, the N, you can really kind of just think about this large N. If that's a pretty large population, then you're probably good because your sample's not going to be that large compared to the population typically. So this is just going to be a little N sample divided by big N population. And let's let's go ahead and decimalize. Let's percentify it and decimalize. So it's less than 5%. And then I'll do the same thing here. Is this number less than... Uh, uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, uh, do, yes. All right, let's format paint this one. Home tab, format paint, and make it that so it turns green again. And then we're gonna have the standard error, standard error of P bar. So remember the standard error is kind of like the standard deviation, but we're not looking for the standard deviation of the population. We're not looking for the standard deviation of the sample. We're looking for the standard deviation as though we're imagining all possible combinations of sample size 250 out of the population of 40,000 and the mean or average or percent of each of those is kind of the idea. Now, by the way, uh, let me just go ahead and make our little graph here, selecting all this data, control backspace, and make our histogram insert and charts and make a histogram. So this is just to show us the binomial nature of uh, the data here. Obviously it's not bell shaped. It's just gonna be two bars, right? There's just two bars. What am I gonna do with that? That doesn't, that's not bell shaped. But if I took the average of all of those, let's go ahead and right click on this data of all possible combinations, like the average is kind of the, the point in between, if I added them up, right, would be 76, 1, 191 over 250. And then the middle point would be kind of like the average in essence. All right, so now we're looking at the standard deviation, uh, which is which is basically kind of, uh, kind of like the standard error, which is basically the standard deviation of all possible combinations like the X bar, which is what we're gonna be used when we do tend towards the bell shaped curve, which we think that we could do because these numbers were tested to be greater than the number five and therefore will tend towards a bell shaped curve according to the central limit theorem. So we can then use this equation over here. So I'm gonna say, all right, then this equation that we wanna pick up is gonna be this one, P times one minus P over N, the square root of all of that. We don't need the correction factor because of this test right here. 
uh, the relationship basically big in population is pretty large. All right, so this is going to be equal to the square root, square root SQRT of P, which is going to be, let's put some brackets around this. This is going to be uh, this one times 1 minus P, which we already calculated right here, 1 minus P. So I'm just going to pick up that one. And then I'm going to put brackets around that and divide that by, which I probably don't need the brackets. It would have done that first anyways, but I'm going to divide that by then the the divided by then the n little n sample so it's going to be that one closing it up and then okay so let's go ahead and uh, percentify to recognize or let's just add some decimalize let's decimalize it so actually let's add a couple more decimals so let's let's go bring it out to here okay and so then i'm going to calculate the margin of error now we said that we wanted to have over here, we said we wanted to have uh, two standard deviations. We wanted to have, so we basically calculated here kind of like the middle point in essence of the bell curve, two standard deviations away would be, would be encompassing like something like 95% of the data, right? That's the general uh, concept when we're thinking about our bell curve. So if this is the middle point and I go two standard deviations above and below it is what we're looking for. So how would I calculate? We're gonna say this is one standard deviation times then the two that is gonna be our plus and minus above and below. Let's decimalize that so we can see it. And then I'll pull this down a little bit and let's capitalize this for some format, for formatting sake. Get it right for formatting sake. So P bar one, Let's say this is going to be the upper and then uh, P bar, uh, let's say lower. So let's say, let's say P bar upper and lower. And so then if this is the middle point, then I can say, what's my range going to be that we're looking at? We're looking at the, the middle point of the graph. So if I think about over here, just to see what we're measuring. If we look at our bell curve that we're creating, we're imagining the middle point of the graph here and then we're looking two standard deviations away. That's what we're trying to get to. So we're gonna say plus going up this way, minus going around this way. Remembering we can measure this in terms of standard deviations or the related percentages related to it. And then, and then we'll graph that. And when we graph it, we wanna make the X's long enough to encompass all of the data. All right, so let's go back on over here. So we're gonna say this is the middle point. The middle point is the, uh, the 75 and then we're going to say uh, plus the standard deviation times two which is the margin of error and then we're going to say enter and let's go ahead and decimalize it and then we're going to say that's going to be actually I should have said minus this is no that's the upper I did upper first and then I'll do the lower so the lower is going to be equal to the middle point which is keeps on changing but it's this minus then standard deviation times two which we already calculated as the margin of error let's decimalize that boom boom okay and then we could say then the uh the p we can say the the probability of and i'm going to do a little kind of formatting thing here so let's do this in a formula this equals and then i'm going to say quotes and put a P, I'm gonna do a, ten, a dynamic text thing. We have a P and then I'm gonna put brackets around it. Do, 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 and then that's the end of the typing that I'm gonna put right now. So I'm gonna end the quotes. Then I'm gonna tie that to something else that's with an and, and I wanna say it has to go uh, 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 0.07. Uh, it's gonna be this one, the high one is gonna be less than, so I'm gonna put another text in here. So I need to put an and, and then quotes, and then this is gonna be the uh, the less than, I'm gonna put less than, or let's say, or equal to, and then I'll put P bar, and then it's gonna be less than or equal to, and then I'm gonna end the quotes, and then I'm going to say, to say, and I have to tie that then too. And then I'm going to be picking up this one 
and then boom. So we have a dynamic cell. Now it's all too long because of the decimals. So then I can go back in here and say, I need to fix this one rounding it. So I'm gonna put a round in front of it and then go to the end of that bit. I wanna round it two decimal places. That's a two. I wanna round this one. So I'll put a round in front of that tab and then to the end of it to two decimal places two and close it up enter so we have something like that i should probably close up my bracket here so let's go to the end of this one and do one more bit which is going to be that and i'm going to say then and and then quotes close up the brackets end quote boom so then again that's a little bit tedious to do those dynamic references but this will change with these two cells and if you practice that it gets a little bit easier to do so now we're going to say okay how can we calculate that percent well i'm looking at this middle point with, which is within those two ranges so i've calculated these ranges basically the orange part uh, equivalent right and if i look at the norm.dist that'll calculate up to here and then i'm going to subtract out the blue part so i'm going to calculate up to here and then subtract out up to here which will leave me with the middle bit and that'll give us the percent so we're going to say this will be equal to the norm dot dist and i'm going to say the x is going to be the upper uh the upper bit which is going to be then this one and then i'm going to say comma the mean is going to be this bit and then comma the standard deviation is the standard error and then comma and then we want it to be cumulative therefore a one instead of a zero close it up and then subtracting out that first little tail bit which is gonna be norm.dist. And this time the X is gonna be the lower X comma. And then the mean is gonna be that 7440 comma. And then the standard deviation is the standard error comma. We want it to be cumulative. Therefore one instead of a zero, close it up and enter. Percentify to recognize and then add some decimal. Percentify and then add some decimal. So around 95.46, which makes sense because we know that within two standard deviations, we have like around that 95% as a general rule for the bell-shaped curve. All right, let's make this blue and bordered. Let's put some blue around it. We're going to put it, make it border blue. All right, so nice calm blue. We're happy about disparaging 75, 73% of the population, but that 26 that got away still ah, just irks just arcs me and so i have to have the calm blue ocean color to to calm us down from the disparages department's failure to disparage within a week all complaints let's go ahead and make a skinny i'm going to go to the home tab format paint and make a skinny r and then we'll graph this thing out okay so let's say this is going to be our chart uh standard deviation std uh D, std range let's say uh range and i'm going to make this one a little bit larger and we're going to go four standard deviations out that's because i'm trying to find a standard deviation large enough to encompass the entire range for the chart to fit in even given the fact that the chart's going to change remembering that four standard deviations is way out there so i'm going to say this is going to be the lower x this is going to be the upper x and then four standard deviations is going to be the middle point, which will be the 72.8 plus or minus, because I'm at the lower point, minus the standard deviation, which is going to be this one times this time times four. And then let's percentify to recognize, add some decimals. And then this one's going to be equal to the middle point, which is going to be plus this time the standard, uh, the standard error times four and then we'll percentify to recognize add some decimals boom so now i'm going to plot this thing let's make a take that skinny r home tab format paint make a skinny u skinny u look at you skinny we're going to say this is going to be xp of x and this is going to be we'll make a z and then we'll do one more let's format paint these making them or let's go home tab font group make them black and white for a header style header style and then i'm going to start here i'm going to say let's make it go down to something like uh 60 so that we have a little bit of a cushion 
I'm going to put 0.6 and then I'll percentify it. Let's percentify it. And then I'm going to say 0.61 and then percentify that. And I'm going to bring it down to like 85, let's say. So let's go from 60 down to, let's, let's, let's actually go from 55. Let's go from 55 to 56 and let's, let's percentify to recognize and then 56. I'm going to delete these and then we'll bring it down to like, let's be, bring it down to like 90, I guess. Taking this down to around 90 just to give us a bit of a cushion. So we'll go down to like 90 doot, 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 right there. And then we're going to say, let's, let's take our norm.dist equals norm.dist. We're going to take our X, which is here, comma, the mean is going to be that 72. Let's F4 on the keyboard to make it absolute so I can copy it down, comma. The standard deviation is the standard error. F4 on the keyboard, comma. This time, we don't want it cumulative, but just a zero, therefore. Closing it up, percentify to recognize, add some decimals, double-click the fill handle to take it down. Now, note this adds up to 10,000 because of the nature of the functions, which is a little bit wonky, but I tend to like to try to get that to add up to 100. You don't necessarily need to do it, but I, I usually go into here and go to the end of it and divide this by 100, and then I'm going to double click this down, and now we're at 100. And uh, so, so that will typically be the case when you're graphing the percentages, uh, this percentage situation. So, and anyways, that's that okay so that's that and let's make these let's skinnerize these double click and then i'll make them a little wider to give us a bit of a cushion and then i'm going to calculate the z score so z score uh is going to be remember i can measure this bottom bit x's or z's x's or z's so i want to have the z's as well uh, this is going to be equal to brackets this x minus the middle point F4 on the keyboard, closing it up, divided by the standard deviation here, F4 on the keyboard, so I can copy that down, and then don't need to close it up, and then enter, and let's, let's add some decimalize, decimalize it, double clicking to drag it in it down. So there we have it, and so boom, boom, okay. And so let's make this a little bit smaller, and then a little bit larger. Let's add the graph and check it out. So I'm gonna, select the p of x control shift down control backspace insert we can do it this multiple ways here's this graph type here's a line graph but we're going to do the good old area graph do the whole fancy the most fancy pantsies pleats the whole pants are full of pleats my pantsies are so fancy they've got pleats all over them the whole thing is like pleats because pleats are pleats are fancy and my pantsies are fancy right now that's what we're doing so we're going to say we're going to take that and then we're going to change we're going to go to the design select data and then edit and then let's take this will be the x's control shift down control backspace select this till it shows up so i can see it there it showed up so i'm going to say okay and then okay all right, and then I also want to be adding the two standard deviations. So let's do it this way. I'm gonna do a, a dynamic or somewhat of a text field. I'm gonna say this is gonna be equal to, oh no, oh no, what did I do? I don't know, it's okay, it's okay. So this is gonna be equal to, I'm gonna say, uh, let's put this little thing, I forget what that's called, an apostrophe, I think. So, well, so make it a text type of field i'm going to say i want to go from negative uh two is going to be and then i'm going to put a text in here by putting an and and then a quote and then i'm going to put a less than and then a z and then i'm going to put uh, a less than and then in the quote and then an and to tie tie it to a number two i could put this whole thing in quotes Right, I could, but tie it to a two. That'll work, I think. No, it doesn't like that. Let's say, let's just say I do this. Negative two. There we go. Okay. So there's my little thing. So I'm, I'm just going to say two standard deviations in terms of Z score. 
all right, so how do I get that? How do I get that? I'm going to say this is going to be equal to if tab, I'm going to embed an and because I have two conditions to these two conditions. And I want to say if this Z, that Z needs to be, uh, uh, it needs to be greater than negative two comma and the next and condition that Z needs to be less than positive to close it up. Those are my two conditions back to the if part comma, what do you want us to do if it's true? Give me the P of X and then comma, what do you want us to do if it's false? Leave it blank. We're going to put a blank space with a quote space quote because it's a text field and enter. Let's personify it's blank, but I'm still going to personify add some decimals, double click it down and check it shows up down here somewhere that makes sense. So now I can add that. And once I have two sets of data, I can then add a second X to the second set of data, which will be our Z bits. So I'm going to go over here and we're going to say uh, select data. And I'm going to say that we want to add data. It's going to be this data. And then I'm going to select the range, the home on the range, select in the range, click this until it shows up because I can see it showing up here. I could see it showing up down here. That looks MUI B to the end. I want to add another X down here. So I'm going to double click on that middle bit, add a secondary access, axis, close. I don't need this side. So get rid of that, get out of here. And then I'm going to go in and say into my data. And on this second range, I'm going to assign a different X to it, selecting this bit on that second range, go into my Z's control. Wait, delete what's in there already or else it's going to get messed up and then go into here and control shift down control backspace select here until it shows up shows up okay movie b to the end it's still not showing up down here why because i had i got to hit the plus button axes i want a secondary axis boom but i don't want it at the top i want it at the bottom so i'm going to hit more options i have a customer complaint about that shut up well i'm showing a video of you on on Twitter making you look stupid okay okay I, I won't you can leave it up there leave it up there I don't care I like it up there I'll I'll post an apology that it's that you were actually correct to have it up top because I don't the disparagement departments after me okay wait a second all right let's see okay so then we once we have that I can go to the insert and say to do it and we can draw a little line oh what is that that's not what i wanted i want just a line insert and then a line that's not a line dude what are you doing insert just a line oh oh okay so then and then we could say okay here's like the two standard deviations which is is at like 67 right and that's what we got over over here 67 68 to 79 is two standard deviations to do, 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 do is like around the 79 is it right there that it's calculating two standard deviations on the high end it's a little wonky because it shifts like that but that's the general that's the general idea okay let's go ahead and make this blue and bordered we're running long on time I'm going to have to file a complaint about this and you've got no you've got no customer disparagement department to properly deal with it so you're just going to have to try to you can just going to have to deal with it your your presentations are too long they're too long okay so there there it is